Hello, my name is Trey, and welcome to What Can I Change? Today, we're talking about white lives matter. Buckle up. That world, I told them I was through with it. Yes. Ah, ah, uh huh. Ladies and gentlemen. Black lives matter. If black lives matter, then some of these things that we have been talking about on this show, things I've been talking about throughout my entire political career, would be getting attention, not the t shirt right? Not the t-shirt, but these actual statistics that matter. And here are just a few of them. 117,626 black children were killed by surgical abortion in the United States in 2018, right? Those are recent statistics. Just so we are clear, abortion in America has contributed to the greatest decline in black population since the first black slaves arrived. You will hear people often talk about um, lynching. This is like a new thing. They like to, they like neoliberalism. They could talk about lynching and they compare everything to lynchings. It's just like being lynched, 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 lynched. Well, for your reference, you should know that 4,467 people in the United States were victims of lynching. I love when it comes to being black and everything that we can't seem to move forward because it's always well, the white man did this and the white person did this and slavery and all that. Even though we all have all the facts now, we have the facts that Africans were selling our own kind. We have facts that we kill ourselves more than anybody kills us. We get abortions. We kill our children more than any race right now. And we're the smallest population. I don't understand when I say we kill more than anything, I mean, like, compared to how small we are, the, the amount of we kill more of our own kind than anybody else. But yet we say it's white people killing us on the streets when every statistic tells us no. We have gotten into this place where we're in this thing called a groupthink. If you've ever heard of groupthink, it's kind of where people feel pressure to conform to the group of to the group because the group is so overpowering and wanting to think one way that we start to conform. So we get a bunch of black people saying, well, yeah, let's listen to rap music. Who talks about gang banging and shooting and killing. Oh yeah. Let's talk about twerking on a hood of a car because that's expression of ourselves. That's the only way black people and black women can express themselves. It's twerking on a hood of a car. And if you're a man, the only way you can express yourself is to tote guns and shoot, do drugs, pop perkies and all that. That's that's all we're good for is either that or showing ourselves off sexually. And then what? also what do we add to that? We just destroy our own kind. We have abortions. We take the lives of innocent kids that we are just proud to go out and have sexual relations with anyone and everyone because you know what? That's freedom. I'm going to go do it with this man and I'm going to go do it with that man. And us guys are just like, yeah, I just want to run through every girl we can. I don't care how many babies I have. It doesn't matter to me. And we, we're, we're proud of that. We're, we're just loving it. We're just loving the whole term of baby daddy and baby mama. We're so much smarter than this. And that's what bothers me when it comes to Listen, Black Lives Matter, and I'm not talking about even from being black. Like if we just use a logical standing, Black Lives Matter, but we talk about black lives as if they don't matter. We kill our babies more than anything. We kill each other more than anything on the streets. We're incarcerated. And we we are just so much better of a people than what we keep blaming white people for doing, like as if we can't think for ourselves. But yet we 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 are led by certain people in the media that we have allowed and we just stay silent. We don't say anything. Instead, we just go, well, racist up, racist up, racist. It's like, man, you know what that sounds? It sounds like people who can't even think at all. They can't even come to a logical conclusion. Like, Hmm, well, we're killing ourselves in the streets. What can we do about that? From 1883 to 1941, 3,265 of those people were black. And you keep talking about lynching as this horrific thing that's happened in the past, right? And yet when you say to people today that 20 million Black infants were aborted, they don't even blink an eye. They don't even bat an eyelash. No, no, less than batting an eyelash. They tell those same Black people that they need to be outraged when a Planned Parenthood clinic shuts down. 20 million. When you talk about people that are killed in the millions, when you talk about 
uh, the Jewish Holocaust, when you talk about the Rwandan Holocaust, people are, oh my gosh, oh my, this is horrible. Of course, because it is horrible. But for whatever reason, since we have convinced ourselves to genocide our own offspring, nobody cares. Nobody cares. They don't bet us. In fact, they tell you that it is your right. 20 million. That number is so staggering. I even have a hard time comprehending. 20 million children. Gone. But we're supposed to be outraged when they want to shut down a parent, a Planned Parenthood. This is this is what we live for. This is what we're fighting for as black people. We're so much better than this. And I'm not here to just be like speaking on behalf of black people. They're entitled to you're entitled to think whatever you want, black, white, orange, gray. I'm saying just as a logical person who's been around white people the majority of my life, and I've been around black people. I've lived in certain communities that were all black. I've lived in certain communities that were all white. And I can tell you that just as a normal individual, I care about black people, but I don't understand why they want to destroy themselves so bad. Like, I don't understand how it works. How does it work so well? Sorry. I don't understand how it works. How does it work so well that we really have literally our only culture here is twerking and violence now? I don't understand, like, how this has happened to us. It was just small things. It was from the gangster rap and all that kind of stuff. We were kind of into it. But then all of a sudden, what's that, that, that seed of it's the white people. As soon as that seed kept getting brought up and it started destroying us back in the seventies and eighties, it started ripping our families apart and start saying, you don't need a father in the home, have as many babies as you want. We'll put you on welfare. And then it just started slowly sliding from there. Then we just started getting rid of our babies all together. And then we started blaming this person and that person, the white person, black men don't want to be in the home. And then black men, we just run to, oh, well, you know what? I just got to run through every black girl and everything. They're not nothing to me. And I just have as many as I can while I do drugs and all that. It's just wild. Wild. Oh my gosh. Oh my, this is a horror, of course, because it is horrible. But for whatever reason, since we have convinced ourselves to genocide our own offspring, nobody cares. Nobody cares. They don't bet us. In fact, they tell you that it is your right. So think about that 20 million black babies, and yet a t shirt is what got attention last night. In 2012, more black babies were killed by abortion in New York City than were born. Imagine that, your abortion rate being higher than your live birth rate in a city. And they celebrate it. Do you remember, notoriously, the governor lit up the city pink when they talked about expanding abortion rights, expanding the black genocide, light up the skyscrapers pink. It is a win a win for who, though, is the question. A win for who? 79% of planned parenthood abortion facilities are located within walking distance of neighborhoods that have a higher proportion of Latina and Black women. Let's stop it right there right quick. So you heard that. They put planned parenthoods within walking distance of Black and Latina. The people you think care about the black community, I don't understand why you think that they don't care about us. It's not the white people, it's certain individuals who don't care about us. There are black people who advocate for abortion clinics. So don't give me, it's just the white man. Don't give me that. Because the black people are going more than anyone else. It's not white people saying, go ahead, black people, go go take your take your babies. We are literally out here saying, please. Please, let me just run through as many men. Let me just run through as many women as I can. And then we'll have as many abortions as we can because it's our right to k- kill our own people. 20 million. But you see how much we are on the decline. But yet, we don't care. It hurts me. It hurts me that we that, that black people don't even care. 
any more for themselves. They rather just see themselves fall. And they don't care. We still celebrate the few black people that make it. The the Lizzo's, the the one Lizzo that makes it. It says as soon as she makes it and gets a million dollar house, and she's oppressed. Even Lizzo can't see it. Cardi B, they can't see it. Beyonce, Jay Z, all the successful black people that made it, while millions of us will never see any kind of money or any success like that. The music they're making, it, it's not boosting us at all. It's glad as much you want to think that Lizzo making it, Beyonce making it, Drake making it, whoever you want to say it, name a black person who made it. Name them and tell me, has our community gotten better since they've made it? New. No. We're still failing because we put all our hopes and dreams into celebrities, in rappers, in pop stars, in black politicians. We put all our hope into people who don't, who aren't pushing us forward. We can't do that. We need to be a community of ourselves. Let's encourage ourselves. I don't need to hear Cardi B tell me how I need to think. I don't need Lizzo to tell me, okay? I don't need Beyonce. I don't need Jay-Z. I don't need Lil Wayne to tell me how to feel. I'm not knocking all these people because sometimes they do have good intentions, but that doesn't mean we have to put all our hope and faith on every word they say. We only do that with God. We don't do it with these people, okay? Heck, I don't put all my hope and faith in the Candace Owens. Candace Owens didn't put all her hope and faith into herself. We do this. We put our hope and stuff into God. But yet we 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 glorify this. We glorify this this love for death. I don't know why. You remember notoriously the governor lit up the city pink when they talked about expanding abortion rights, expanding the black genocide, light up the skyscrapers pink. It is a win. A win for who, though, is the question. A win for who? 79% of planned parenthood abortion facilities are located within walking distance of neighborhoods that have a higher proportion of Latina and Black women. But that's not the only thing that's killing Black America, literally. We also know obesity is killing Black America. I wish, you know what we should have done? We should have put a White Lives Matter t-shirt on Lizzo. Maybe we could have gotten a lot of attention about obesity and how it's actually killing Black Americans. Obesity is the number one killer in America, okay? I know Black Lives Matter told you it was police shootings, right? It made you think that thousands of Black men were dying at the hands of police. No, no, absolutely not. I think in the year um, 2020, was it nine unarmed Black men were killed by police? Nine of them? But obesity is killing people at a very high rate, and Black women have the highest rates of obesity. It's the number one killer. And of course, we sit at the top of it. Black women, 56.9% of us are classified as obese. Y'all know I'm a strong advocate against obesity because I am myself obese. have lost 100 pounds, still working my way down. Um, But you know how I feel about obesity, whether you're white, black, or anything. But it's the same thing. When I was talking about Lizzo earlier, she... She's so talented. And I, I I hate to ever say somebody is a terrible person because I don't know Lizzo. I don't know her. But for her to keep pushing obesity as if it's funny, if it's a joke, as if, oh, whatever. Be fat, girl. Just be fat. When it's the number one killer. Why? Why do we advocate so much for death in the black community? Abortions, obesity. Like, why do we advocate so much death in the black community? But yet we're just like, eh, it's the white people. We like, we're so, we're human beings. We're so smart. We're so bright. Why can't we just take these leaders down? Let's just be like one time to be like, hey, Lizzo, no, that's not the way. I'm sorry. No, Lizzo. Mm -mm. Look, you can make great music and maybe I'll come to a concert. But the second you start saying something about obesity, I got, we got to speak up because it's killing our women. It's killing our men. It's killing our women and killing our men. So we need to stand up and be like, Lizzo, you got to stop. You're killing us. You're saying it's okay, but you're not the one who's going to pay that hospital bill. Lizzo, we don't have your money. We don't have Lizzo money. So when we get fat and obese and everything starts getting more complicated, we don't have the money. We can, we're not going to be able to stop the complications. There's going to be nothing we can do. Once it comes for us, it's over. All those complications, the diabetes and getting your arm cut off and legs cut off, is Elizabeth going to be there for you? No, she don't care. 
Or either 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 that or she does care, but she's just twisted it. She got it twisted where she thinks because she's had a hard time losing weight, I'm assuming, if she has a hard time losing weight, that she she some reason equates us saying, Hey, we can help you lose weight. We she equates that to hating her. Like if we say to people, Hey, you being obese is gonna make it hard on your body. No, you're just fat phobic and you just you don't care about me. It's like I would say the same thing about somebody who smokes cigarettes. I say the same thing about porn addicts. I say the same thing about marijuana addicts. I've seen it in my life. I'm not going to tell you something that ain't real. It's real. Look at the numbers. Like, what? It, when do numbers matter? Numbers only matter when it's the other color of people killing us. If if anything else, the numbers only matter when it comes to the white man killing us, but it does not matter when it comes to obesity. It does not matter when it comes to abortion. It only matters if a white person is the one killing us. I'm so tired of black people advocating for death. And I don't mean like black people, like I don't like, I'm not saying like black people like ghetto and all that. No, no, no. I mean, as a race of people, like as just as a people, we advocate for death because we follow this other side. Black people, why do we follow this other side that says these things? And I believe some of it, not the obesity thing ever or the abortion thing ever, but I have believed at one point in my life that everybody's racist. Trust me, I got called the N-word all the time, but it's not as much as you think, though. I got called the N-word all the time, but not all the time by all the people. It was only a select group that called me the N word, and they said it all the time. That does not mean my whole town was racist, because there was plenty of people who were willing to reach out to me and help me. And after a while, even me, because I started to believe the lie of me being black, which meant I was dumber and I didn't understand things. I started to believe that I needed help and I had to go ask for money. I had to do these things because I'm black and this world is against me because I'm black. And it wasn't true. There were smart black people in my school. There were smart black people in my communities. I just didn't see enough because I didn't want to. I wanted to believe me being black was already a death sentence. It was already, might as well give up. I'm black. But it's not true. Talk about criminality. No one wants to talk about it if you're not talking about a police officer, right? People don't want to talk about the fact that black people are slaughtering other black people. People don't want to talk about black on black crime. It doesn't matter because we're doing it to ourselves, right? Just like we're aborting our own babies. Applaud it. Applaud it. In fact, put it in the music. Put the criminality in the music and celebrate it. Give it a Grammy. Give black criminality a Grammy so that we understand that this is ours. Sit in the cool club, right? Now we know what it means to be black. Now we know what it means to not be a traitor to your own race. Murder your own race. And if you don't do it in your womb, grab a gun. Kill the guy next to you. Applause all around the world. This is what I was trying to say earlier. Hey, listen, I'm not the first. I'm clearly not the only person who knows that. I learned from other black people about this. Surprisingly? No, it's not surprising. Because black people are... Black people are a smart group of people. It's like we're human beings just like any other race, but yet we treat ourselves as if we're completely separated. Like uh, we have to be taught things, but there are so many bright black people out there who even name off these things that we don't even want to listen to. And that's, that's a shame. We only want to listen to the black people who say, yep. And I walked up on them. Or we want to listen to women who twerk and tell us we need to do all this and all that. But we don't want to listen to the black people saying, Hey, uh, actually, now I think about it, our music is kind of damaging. It's, 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 it's always about killing. It's always about killing drill drill songs and how I'm going to come kill you and your mama and your father. And, and, and now we, I'm going to come kill your son. It's like, we're going to kill our babies. It's like black people have been speaking out against this, but those black people get completely ignored because, oh no, they're dumb. They're dumb. They're whitewashed. They're stupid. They're, they're just, they, they only believe what the white man says. What? 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 does the white man have to gain by more of us living? What does the white man have to gain by more of us living? Do you ever notice that? So if we come out and a black person says, hey, maybe we need to calm down on this music that we have in our black culture. We think it's a white man, like that's whitewash. Like, what does that matter? Do you think, if you think the world is inherently racist, do you think it's smarter for them to allow us to make gang banging? videos and abort our kids as our population goes down, you think it would be smarter for them to do that 
and we flat out ignore any black person that says anything about that? Or do you think if they were truly racist, they would just let us keep doing what I do? But if you believe that, if you if you think that the white man truly wanted us down, do you think they would say, hey, um, let's let <laughs> let's not let them talk against this stuff. We want them to make gangbanging music. We want them to talk about killing their babies. We want them to go break up families. We want them to not have fathers in the home. And if a black person comes out and speaks against that, you us as black people, we speak against them. Talk about water in the thing thing. We so if I was trying to kill a race off, what would I do? I would say, hey, you know what? Just let them talk about killing themselves. <laughs> Let's let them do that. Let's just talk. Let them talk about gang banging. Let's let them talk about abortion. Let's let them talk about anything to take the black people out of it. And if any black person comes up, hey, we'll talk. The, us as white people, we're going to talk against it. We're going to say, no, 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 no. Let them make the music. Let them express themselves. That's the black culture. Death, death, and more death. So when a black person comes up and says, hey, no, my brothers and sisters, let's let's do something different. Let's 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 work on our education. Let's work on these things. And we just flat out ignore him and say it's the white man. Hey, let's stop killing each other. And that's the white man. That's racism right there. Quit killing each other. We need to help our people. Oh, nope, I'm racist. That's the, I like, we got to use our logic, but we're being taught. We're being taught so young. We're being taught so young. If you see me freeze, by the way, it's because I don't know if my screen's freezing. So I'm just re saying stuff. We're taught from such a young age that this is the way to go. Express yourself. Be half naked. Run through women. Kill your babies. Let's go shoot some people in the streets because they said something wild. And if he wants to say something crazy, I got something ready for him. It's like, what is that? We used to see that all the time in the movies back in the day. Menace to Society. Juice. Um, Menace to Society. Juice. Poetic Justice. Just other movies that were always about killing and killing and killing. And we just... That's just that's just the black neighborhood. That's just the way it goes. That's still how it goes. Ain't nothing changed. But another black man getting killed in central central uh, South Central LA. Black people, our culture doesn't have to be death, and it doesn't have to be death and sex. Death, sex. That's pretty much all it is. Death and sex. That's, that's all our culture is now. And you, we cannot be proud of that. I won't be proud of that. I know the black culture is much more than that. We're human beings like everybody else. But we're not just sex and death. I refuse to let that be. Per the CDC, African Americans are four times more likely to be killed by a gun than the overall population. And once again, it's not a white person that is pulling the trigger, it's another black person. We account for almost 40% of all of the homicide offenders in the United States, 40% coming from the smallest piece of the population. We're talking about this, what 7% of the population is black men and they're accounting for 40% of all of the homicides in the United States. But let's not talk about that. In fact, let's call that racist to even acknowledge that truth, to talk about the ills in our own com community. That's racism. Let's just, let's just move on for it. People love to talk about the incarceration rates, right? Because the incarceration rates allow you to understand the result without ever having to talk about the problem, right? You don't have to talk about the equation. I'll just give you the answer. Black men are, are incarcerated, right? It says here that there are nearly five times the rate of black men in prison than white people. Oh, perfect narrative. It must be racism. No, it has nothing to do with the fact that we're the most murderous group in America. It has nothing to do with that. Of course, one plus one equals two, but let's focus on the two and not the one plus one. Seven percent of black men are <laughs> causing 40 percent of the homicides. Do you understand how staggering that a number is? Seven percent are for 40 percent of the homicides. You don't understand how much killing has to be done for seven percent to be 40 percent of the homicides. What do you think that is? I mean, really? Like if it if it's really racism, if it's systemically racist, what is it? Is it because there is white people teaching us to kill each other? And if so, how? Like these are the questions I have to ask myself back in the day when I used to hear about the incarceration and all that. 
I agree. That's when I was a young man. That's when I was in high school. But as I got older, I was starting to say, you know, and I told you, I hung out with, I was around more black people as I got older. And I started to see it. And I saw it on the streets. And I was just kind of like, you know, I've come across, listen, I've come across some violent white men, I've come across some violent Hispanics, but I've came across way more violent black men. Like, I mean, ready to fight. I've told you guys about the time I saw somebody get stomped out in my front yard where I was living at the time. Just stomped out. And it was a normal day. We didn't even help him because we already knew what the end results were going to be. We try to help him. We get stomped out. It was just like, and but nobody even cared. These black men stomped him out in my front yard as if I wasn't even living there. They don't care. They could have killed that young man. Thank God he didn't die. I don't know what happened to him. He struggled, but he got his head stomped in. And like, and we glorify that. We're just like, yeah, stomp a man. I want to stomp him out. I want to kill this man. As soon as I see him, I'm it's on sight. It's just like, why do, why do we glorify that? It's not just men. Women do it too. We see it all the time. Or they'll call a, a man to come do something to another man because she got mad at him. Or they'll fight another woman. They'll fight another woman, pull her hair out, do all this, put it on World Star, make a story time about it. And I'm not saying all black women make story times because they're proud of their story, fighting time. But you hear black women talk about it all the time. Like, you can get the hands. You can get the hands. And the same thing with black guys, you know, oh, man, you can catch the fade, dog. I mean, I got the nine ready for you. Like why? Why do we? Why do we want to fight and die so much? Why do we? Why do we like love to kill each other so much to the point where it's just like we have? It's to the point so much that we put it in a song because it's just so normal. It's just so normal to take lives that we have to put it in a song. We have to. It's the only way we know how to express ourselves. Is yep. Where I grew up, it was always killings. Why don't we ask why? You think that's just normal? Like why is it every time we we hear rappers say that in a song? We're just like, well, that's just how it is in the black neighborhood. But why? But why? Why is it like that in the black neighborhood? It can't just be racism. It just can't. It just can't. Are other fathers in the home? Okay. Why aren't there fathers in the home? Okay. Okay. So if that's the case, why do why do black women glorify not having a father in the home? Is that something like why is that? Why do black men glorify that? If it's such a bad thing for a father not to be in the home, why do we glorify it? Black women love to have kids and not and then say, I don't need the man. Or a black man would love to say he has this many kids with this many women. But we glorify it. We don't talk about it like it's a bad thing. We just say, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I got 12. I got, I got, I got 12 kids with eight women. Like, it's, 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 it's special. It's great. That's, that's a great thing to do. Now we got just <laughs> this many kids without one father. And the only people who can afford to do that are rich, rich, rich celebrities. But it's not the rich, rich, rich celebrities that ones that are always doing it. It's people who don't have the money to have twelve children and take a, take care of eight different women and twelve children in four different homes. It's just what? Like, why do we glorify that? Like, it's a cool thing to do, and that's all we talk about. And now we talk about sex and getting head and all that. Like, it's just the coolest thing to do. We don't even talk about intimate sex anymore. It's just give me the throat. Now we've almost took sex all the way out of it and said, no, I just want her neck. I just want, or a woman say, I just want his neck. I just want to have a head. I just want the pleasure of taking, I mean, gosh, we just, we don't even want to have even intimacy. We just want the pleasure now. It's all been taken out. It still results in a lot of babies. We know that's not the truth that they're getting neck because more babies are still getting aborted, but we just glorify it. Like it's the cool thing to do. Let's just go kill another brother on the streets, put it in the paper. And then we'll talk about how much violence there is and how many black people are down on the streets and how this needs to stop. Oh, what's that another rap song? Oh, it's it's only entertainment. No, it's not. It's real life. If it was only entertainment, it wouldn't be happening. It'd be one thing if we were talking about shooting somebody and it was rare, but it's not rare. It's not even rare for a black man to down the streets from another black man. Abortions aren't rare anymore. So what are we talking about? It's only entertainment. How is it only entertainment if it's affecting us so much? It can't just be entertainment anymore. These little kids literally look up to these drill rappers. It can't be only entertainment no more. You know what else does it matter? It doesn't matter at all. The education statistics. Don't even pay attention to the fact that 74% of black boys in California can't pass a basic reading exam. You know why? Because we love ignorance. We should celebrate ignorance, right? Who cares that across five schools in an inner city like Baltimore, they couldn't find a single child that was proficient in reading and in writing? Who cares? Who cares that three out of four black boys in California schools 
cannot meet writing standards. Who cares? It's not in a White Lives Matter t-shirt. So we won't talk about the fact that nearly 80% of Black boys in the fourth grade failed to meet state reading standards. And finally, and I didn't speak much on the obesity, I'll admit, because I make a bunch of videos on that. But here's These are the kind of videos I don't make as often. <sighs> Our educational system, you know? It's, it's, this is right after the killings and the abortions and the just no care for the obesity killing us. It, it breaks my heart to know that these young black men, these young black girls, and I've been, I've worked with kids almost 13 years now. Yeah. So I've seen black kids and white kids and Hispanic kids. And I understand that sometimes economic, economic status does play a role, obviously. It's so disheartening because when these black kids that I've ever seen that struggle with class, when they get talked about, it's not even like they get talked about in a racist way. They get talked about, I'm sorry, he just doesn't get it, you know, it's just this and that. And it's just like, it's almost like black people just have to look, be looked down upon. We look down upon ourselves. I've heard black people talk bad about other black kids as if the kids don't get it. I went to a school. I worked at a school at one time that was mainly black. And the difference, when I went to this black school, the yelling was so absurd. Like, it wasn't like, you know how kids get in trouble, they might get a yelling, like, hey, don't do that. Like at the black school, it was literally, hey, ah, ah, everywhere, which is constant yelling. It was like running a freaking circus because us black people we've been taught that the only way that we can even listen is that we're being yelled at like we're animals and black people will do it to other black people we whip each other like slaves and i want to say this the fact that we are struggling this bad in reading we're struggling this bad to do anything in the educational system that we're we 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 are literally coming out lower and lower and lower and lower, and lower every year and expecting different results. And we, then we wonder why our whole culture is driven by twerking and gangbanging. Like what else are these kids doing? They're not even, they're not even inspiring to go to college. And I'm saying college is for everyone, but they're not even inspiring for it. They're not aspiring to even care about college or care about graduating high school because we can barely even read. And this isn't everywhere. We're talking about the, the main black populations, inner cities and stuff like that. We're talking about stuff like the inner cities and everything like that, where the black, it seems like anytime you go anywhere where it's a lot of black people, it's just complete failure of a city. And it's not racism. That's just not, oh, we'll just block off all the black people. And we're not animals. It shouldn't be if, if black people, if we just live together amongst each other with no interaction outside of that, oh, it's failure. And I, I get it. We don't have enough money for funding and all these kind of stuff. That's fair. But why don't we talk about that more? Why don't we talk about that more? If it's truly just racism and they don't want to give us money, they want to keep us dumb. Why did we didn't let rappers say that this is the way out to go gangbang and sell drugs? Why do we let our women say to go twerk on a hood and go to start an OnlyFans, abort your children, become fat? Why do we let that be the message that that we put out there? If we truly believe that it's only racism that's keeping us down, how come anytime a black person comes out and says, hey, you know, we are kind of doing this to ourselves, too. We got to raise up as black people. We only go, nope, it has to be the white man. So I guess there's no way out. It just can't be that way. I believe I don't think black people are dumb. I don't think naturally they're dumb. Do I think we've been brainwashed and I think there's, there's some success happening to us? Yes. We have gotten into this group think and we let our black leaders and we let ourselves be influenced by uh, the rap culture and the gangbang culture, the drug culture. And the drug culture is, just to speak on that for a second, it kind of went from just selling drugs to just provide for your family, which I still wouldn't agree with. But one thing I wouldn't agree with is where the drug community has gone. The drug songs now aren't even just necessarily oh, I'm selling packs on the street to get by. Even though I wouldn't agree with that either because that puts more black men in jail. But it also has gotten us to the point where it's like, oh, let me just pop a perky and I just don't want to feel. Or we, we get led by people who are drug addicts, but they make it into a catchy song. And I get it because it makes us feel, because, you know, society has really pushed us into this depression 
TikTok and everything has made it seem like it's cool to be depressed. It's cool to have anxiety. But we got to use drugs in order to get by. And then rap makes it seem like, I want to pop another perky so I can't feel my thing. I pop another perky, got it in my veins. I'll do what I can to feel no pain. And that's it. That's all our kids live for now. And I, I, I can tell you, man, how many kids are influenced by the rap game and the drug use and making it cool, making it seem like depression and pain is the only thing we can do. And the only way to get out is to use more drugs. And then the women are talking about, well, the only way to really do anything is to get over on these men and just have sex with as many men as you want to. Go or go twerk on your car. Go do this. Stick your tongue out. Go, ah. I mean, it's just like, wow. Like, that's really what it is. We can't even read. And y'all are talking like this is really important. Like having money, cars, and women is all that's about. And we, our boys can't even read. And you know what's so frustrating is these rappers and everything and pop stars and Lizzo and all that, they talk about it from a standpoint of way up here. They're not talking about it from down here. They're talking about it from up here where they're making millions. They're one of the few black people that made it out. And then, and but they talk about it like every black person is going to make it out if they do the same thing. When we know if a black person starts doing drugs, they could overdose and die. If a woman goes out and decides she wants to have sex with every man, she could have eight kids and have eight abortions. If a woman wants to go out and be fat and proud, she'll die of diabetes. If a fat man goes out and he wants to be obese and just live and be fat, he'll die of diabetes. If he goes out there and sells drugs, he'll get shot and he's dead and we'll have to write a story about it. That's the real reality of living the rap life and that that life of just sex and promiscuity. Um, as being very sexual and being out there. It, for us, the truth is that we're just going to end up with more aborted babies, more dead men, more dead women. That's it. That's all we get. More dead children, more dead men, more dead women. And that's all we're going to get from listening to these influencers. But yet we just prop them up like they that is the black culture and we're so proud to have it. And don't steal our black dances and all this. Don't you dare still twerking. Don't you dare still us doing these all these black moves that don't even matter all these black songs that don't talk about anything but getting more sex and more money, man. And and it only leads to more death. We get so caught up in making so much money. Because that's that's and that's what happens. This is what happens when our black kids aren't allowed to who can't read. It makes a culture of group think. These black kids can't read, so they really think growing up and selling drugs and doing this for money or just working the rest of their lives until. Who cares? You know, I was just going to spend my money on every little thing I can get. What else can I do? I can't read. Well, I've been on this subject way too long, but <sighs> I love black people. I love the black community. I really want us to get it together and bring it together because I really believe as a group of people, we can do this. I don't really think that America is even to the point where they don't want black people to succeed. All we do is get a few leaders to say a few things and it's destroyed us. And, but we they don't always say it through a white mouthpiece. They use our own people to do it. Just like when people talk about slavery, it was our own people who did it. And look at us. Look at it. It's all happening again. Black people are leading ourselves right back to slavery. We can't read anymore. We're reading at a very low level. We're killing each other and we're aborting each other. Tell me, is that a successful black culture? Has pop music really got us anywhere? Has rap got us anywhere? Has gangbang gotten us anywhere? Has obesity got us anywhere? Has any of this stuff really helped the black community? The answer is no. It's only made us slaves once again. And now we're being enslaved by our own kind, just like we were in the beginning. Wow, history really does repeat itself in a different way. Man, remember, just know this. I keep praying for our community. You keep praying for our community. God doesn't want it this way. God wants us all to succeed and love each other, but it can't work if we keep allowing the devil to just plant seeds of death, 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 death. He's doing it. He's wiping the black people out, right? Doing it. It is wiping out other communities too, but today we're focusing on the black community. I pray, man. I pray that one day we get it. And I'm not perfect. I was in the same system. I believe the same lies. We need to kill each other off. I used to listen to that gang bang and stuff. It ain't the way. Jesus died for more than this. Don't, don't, don't let us go back. I hope I made sense. I know I may be all over the place, but it was something I want to talk about, wanted to be passionate about, because I do believe that the black community is, is just failing. But I know it doesn't have to stop. It doesn't have to end. 
at one point in my life, I wanted to give up on the black community, but I won't. God has called us to something greater. We can't, I can't love thy neighbor as myself if I give up on a whole community of people. That's not what we do. We keep preaching. We keep loving. The black community is beautiful. Let's keep doing that. Praise Jesus. Sorry. Sorry. No, I'm not sorry for saying praise Jesus. I just, I'm getting into it. If you made it this far, hey, congratulations, man. I love you guys, man. And I hope you all have a great night. Uh, let's keep praying for our brothers and sisters that they can see what Jesus really did for us. Amen. Hey, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you like this content, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. Stay blessed. I love you guys.